Hello and welcome everyone, Lana here, and today I'm back with another video for Total War Battles Kingdom. If you haven't checked out my original video where I gave an overview and my initial impressions of the game, then you can find it linked in the description. Also, I just want to say this isn't a sponsored video, this is just me uh, taking a look at the Life in the Realm update and sharing more of my impressions now that I've been playing the game for a month or so. So, briefly let's cover the new features that have been added in this Life in the Realm update. I should also say that the footage you'll be seeing on screen is from the PC client of the game. It's available on iOS and Android as well. And uh, last time I recorded the footage from an Android tablet. But today I wanted to capture it from my PC. So the main features of the Life in the Realm update. First one being that it brings your realm to life. There's sprites and animations that have been added to represent people, livestock and exotic wildlife such as ducks. Uh, around on the map now and in the game and you'll see them walking along roads carts and wagons and things like that going between your various castles uh, you can now enjoy the game in french german and spanish they've reworked the uh, kind of daily reward system as well and there's also a bonus the first time you uh, access the game across uh, cross platforms so I really like the changes they brought in with this update. Again, adding in kind of the sprites for people and things like that it really does add to the game and, you know, you can kind of see this living kingdom before you. So I'm a really big fan of that. The other thing I really like is the update to the daily reward system. That was a system which was, I mean, it was okay to start with. You got... Uh, between one to three gold daily as kind of a, a regular tribute is, is I think, the, the terms that they used before. And while that was okay, it didn't really, I don't know if that was necessarily a great sense of reward for kind of constantly coming back. So they, they've looked like they've com completely reworked it. And, you know, you've now got rewards six days of the week. Uh, for each day that you come back, there's a different reward. And that varies between being some gold, crafting materials, or some resources, which I think is a much better way of doing it. Maybe the gold amount they're giving at the moment's maybe a bit high? I don't know. I mean, it's 20 gold for some days. Maybe it's less for others. Have to see how it goes each day. I don't know if that's random or kind of pre-programmed or what have you. But again, I'm very much coming at the, the gold in the game, the premium currency, I still stand by my kind of my initial impressions that I gave last time in my previous video, linked in the description, which is that I see this as a pay-to-progress game rather than a pay-to-win game. I haven't really seen any um, kind of situation where you know you can get a st distinct advantage um, over someone else by using gold. Um, there's always a, a way to progress, maybe slower, but you can still access all the kind of features uh, within the game. Nothing is locked behind the gold. Um, to a point where you can't either, uh, you know, keep logging in for those daily reward gold bonuses and actually use the gold anyway but not have to pay for it. Or, um, crafting is a good example of this. Um, I'm actually just about to try and get some um, some new units that way and they cost something like 300 odd gold if I wanted to straight up buy them and then they'll be ready to use in the barracks. However, obviously, I don't want to spend any money. So, the option you get if you don't want to spend gold is to craft the units. Now that costs a fair bit of crafting material which you can get from skinning animals um, or shearing sheep or well, skinning cattle and uh, shearing sheep. Just don't forget to butcher the sheep afterwards because especially if it's in winter because otherwise they'll get cold and they'll freeze to death and I might have lost a fair few sheep doing that already. Whoops. But um, yeah, once you've got the crafting materials then you need a certain amount of silver and uh, for example you can see here we need 8,000 silver and while that may seem like a fair bit if you've got a lot of your blacksmiths upgraded, you'll be able to get a fair bit coming in uh, every time they produce some silver. But the best way I found is by doing the um, kind of missions and uh, quest battles and things like that, the battle quests, um, and they'll reward you with a fair bit most of the time. Another way that you can do it is by investing in some markets and getting some craftsmen in there as well to benefit from the craftsman bonus. And then if you do have for instance as I do a lot of extra food you can convert that over to silver so I found that's a kind of a good way of oh I need resources over here use the markets get as many as possible and um, make sure they're, they're stacked full of uh, craftsmen as well so build those mansions and you'll be able to get that craftsman bonus so that you get a better exchange rate but yeah overall it's if I haven't been able to access something straight away it's taken a couple of days for me to get up to speed um, the same, you know, to the same point that someone that would have just hit buy with gold um, would have done. Obviously, I have used gold at uh, various points um, that I've gained for free. I just haven't had to buy any. 
Um, and especially with these daily rewards now, you'll get a, a you know a fair bit across a week. Uh, maybe, I guess, looking at the current amounts that they give you, potentially between 30 to 50 gold a week. Um, which, you know, if you save it for a couple of weeks, you can afford new units. Or you can use it as I do, which I use it for kind of all the smaller um, things, just to speed up. Um, upgrades for buildings if I want to, or to heal my troops if I've got a couple of invaders which I've had recently in my kingdom so that I can repel both of them because it was getting very close to uh, when those invaders were going to make off with some resources and I obviously didn't want to lose any. Um, but yeah, apart from kind of building upgrades and speeding those things up, I haven't really used gold too much so I've been kind of storing it up a little bit like a squirrel. But um, yeah, I'm going to kind of keep on playing through the game with this... Um, kind of, I guess, mentality or this purpose of, of not spending any money on buying gold and seeing, you know, um, whether I, you know, still enjoy the game like that or whether there would, be, there would come a point where I'd be like, oh, you know, I want to invest in some gold and, uh, you know, use that to speed up some things here and there. I've still got a couple of regions to unlock left in my realm and obviously lots to expand and by no means is my realm set up the most a kind of efficient way it could be. Um, really over winter I should probably be investing a lot more in... Um, kind of my mining and things like that. Uh, I've been focusing a lot, as you can see, on my um, sheep shearing production or just process um, because I want to get a lot of crafting materials. I want to get a lot of skins so that I can start crafting some uh, new units um, once I've got the silver now. That's that's the next goal, get the silver. I've also done a lot of terraforming, as you can see. I've been shaping lakes so that my fields stay fertile and all those kind of elements of the game, and especially the seasons as well, and interacting with that and knowing which seasons produce the best bonuses for specific industries or or bits like that, it really adds to it, and I, I quite enjoy that. I mean, overall, I'm in debt, you know, if you just say, Blanhart, are you enjoying the game? Yes, I am. Um, you know, as I said, it's not a sponsored video, so I'm not being paid to say that. Um, I genuinely am enjoying this game, and again, this is the type of game that I jump onto two or three times a day for 10, 15 minute chunks. Uh, you know, so uh, across a day I can spend between something like 45 to an hour um, playing uh, this game. Th there's plenty to keep me busy, but it's definitely a game I can I, I want to dip in and out of. It's not something I'm going to spend all my time um, playing, unless I need to totally re-terraform everything, which, to be fair, I did spend like an hour uh, my first winter just changing the whole landscape. Um, so there's certainly plenty of things to do if you want to spend more time on the game, but... Uh, if you're like me and you know want to just keep jumping in, collect all the stuff here and there. Oh, top tip: uh, when you do want to collect a lot of materials or, or or people, craftsmen, things like that, from your castle, just um, either double click on your castle if you're on PC or on your tablet or phone. Um, just press and hold on your castle, and it will suck all the resources within that area into the castle and collect them straight away. You don't have to go around clicking them in one by one. Maybe that's common knowledge, but I was clicking away at them individually for ruddy ages which is great if you're farming as well and you've got loads of fields and you want to collect all the food straight away you can just um, press and hold on tablet or double click on PC on the farm in the center and it will all sort of vacuum up into the center and collect all your resources that way so I think for the most part those are the kind of key things I wanted to talk about and share in this video uh, if you want to see more videos like this every time there's kind of a, a key update for um, Battles Kingdom then let me know I still see that they have the campaign option uh, kind of greyed out and locked, so I'll be interested to see where the development's going with that and, and what they're planning to offer with that down the line. Um, I do look forward to some kind of campaign option, and because um, I know something like Stronghold Kingdoms has that persistent campaign where you can kind of work on your castle um, alongside in a, in a persistent realm with other players interacting, and they can potentially invade you and things like that. So I'd be very interested to see if that's kind of the uh, the, the path that Creative Assembly take with this down the line. But yeah, what are your thoughts of the game, especially if you if you played it kind of from when I did my last video from launch um, to now? How are you still finding it? Have you grown tired of it? Is you know you're not bothered by it anymore? Um, are you are you over it? Did you uh, have you found that you, you think it's more pay to win than pay to progress? Um, have you spent money on it? Have you been happy with your experience with it? You know, share your thoughts, discussion down below, and uh, I'll be happy to read them through there. Personally, from my own experience, I found the second week I think I was playing the game um, regularly quite difficult because I just needed loads of resources to upgrade and build another... I think it was when I was trying to build my second castle, and it just seemed like it was taking forever. But once I got through that, um, kind of progress was a lot faster and I was getting more resources in. So I guess it depends how you place your buildings, how you expand as well that potentially affects you know, how quickly you can progress as well if you're playing it without any kind of um, 
gold um, progress speed up incentive as it were so yeah that's my coverage of the life in the realm update plus some more impressions and thoughts from me share your own down below and i'll catch you in the next one so as always i hope you enjoyed don't forget to comment rate and subscribe follow me on facebook and twitter take pride and join the legion check out my affiliates and sponsors xmg green man gaming and overclockers uk till the next one ciao for now <laughs>